While these crocs lay in wait, this mother makes a difficult choice. She needs to leave her babies. Even though they've grown 10 centimeters in the four months she's watched over them, they're still at the mercy of other bigger predators. But this mother needs to find food to get ready for the next mating season. It's time for the 11 remaining hatchlings to fend for themselves. Ten years pass. During that period, the mother croc mates ten more times. Each breeding cycle spans six months, from the moment she conceives to when she leaves her hatchlings to fend for themselves. It's during the other six months of the year that she builds up the fat reserve she'll need to carry her through each harrowing cycle. But during that time, the hatchlings the mother croc took such pains to protect have not fared so well, having dwindled to just one. The sole survivor from that first clutch was a male who grew about 30 centimeters per year and is now almost three meters long. He's lived to this point off fish, small animals, and remnants from the kills of others. As he gets bigger, though, so does his appetite. He's getting a little big just to sustain himself on birds, maybe a rodent or a lizard. He's gonna need that large mammal. He's gonna need those calories to sustain his growing body. The wildebeests are coming. And even if he has to share one with five other crocs, it means a whopping 50 calories. Five times more than get a large fish. But it's a decision that won't be easy. There's a certain pecking order. The largest animals are going to come in first and feed. He has to also remember he's competing with adults. If he doesn't respect the territory and doesn't get out of the way, they'll kill him. Amazingly, crocodiles never stop growing. So as the youngest crocodile in the river, he's likely also the smallest. Going up against the large adults, there's no telling what could happen. He finds himself surrounded by others twice his size. This is prime real estate. This is for the big boys only. But eventually, he can take his place up there with the big boys. But at this point, the big male will kill him. matched by the larger male. Already dipping into his fat reserves, he swims, looking for less competitive spot. 
but all he finds is more competition. So he leaves the Marver entirely. Four hours later, he's still crossing the sun-scorched savanna in search of a new home. Back at the Mara, the wildebeests are arriving. At first, they stand at the river's edge, leaning in to quench their thirst. They can't escape the inevitable, but they can postpone it. They have to cross the river to get to the grazing on the other side. They know what's in the water, and they'll pile up, and they'll pile up, and they'll pile up behind until it's almost like the balloon is going to burst. And then, as one, they go, ah, here we go. Here we go, and then somebody's gonna go, I can't take it, and just jump in. You'll get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 animals pouring across this 100-yard stretch of river. The wildebeests don't have many defenses against the crocs. But one of them is sheer numbers. The wildebeest has adapted over millions of years to be a, a herding animal. And the reason for that is safety in numbers. You got a lot better shot of making it to the other side if there's a thousand other wildebeests with you. Some of the wildebeests get picked off by the 30 waiting crocs, while most get by. But the risk current throws the plunging herd off course. They miss their exit point. And then they panic. Their hooves have no traction in the mud, and hundreds of them are trampled as they stumble down the steep and slippery embankment. These crocodiles are perfectly engineered stealth hunters, but they don't need to hunt this prey at all. The wildebeests have made a lethal error and are sitting ducks. body count is massive. So huge that where the river narrows, there's a dam of wildebeest parts. Fewer than 1% of wildebeests are lost during this crossing. But that still numbers into the hundreds. If the young crocodile had just bided his time, he could have shared in the overflow of wildebeest. And he would have easily eaten as much as the others. But now, he's tired and starving, trying to reach the next watering hole. His mistake may turn out to be a fatal one. As he trudges on, he picks up the scent of rotting carcass. But it gives him no indication of where he'll find water. 
and the sun blazes high overhead. We often think of reptiles as basking in the sun and being sun lovers. But if he gets too hot, he'll overheat and he'll die. On the verge of overheating, he sees something in the distance. Ahead, a lioness eats a rotting hippo carcass right next to a watering hole. He's starving, but more importantly, he needs to get into the water to cool off. So he can only watch as a pride of lions feast on the tantalizing carcass. By the time his temperature is back to normal, there's nothing left but a few dry bones. So far, his new watering hole has yielded nothing. He's about to move on when he picks up an unmistakable disturbance in the murky water. He can't see it, but something's out there, some kind of prey. He knows this because he has hundreds of tiny sensors, like beard stubble, running the length of his body, particularly near his jaws, directly connected by nerves to his brain. A ripple hits a crocodile's jaws, and the croc can immediately calculate which side felt it more strongly and in what proportion. And if that ripple source is close enough, and it's a prey item, in 200 milliseconds, twice as fast as the blink of an eye, it triggers a lunge and a snap. But just before the source comes into range, a sound startles him. It's a mother croc diving into the water, headed straight for him. Suddenly, the source of those ripples becomes clear. A two-day-old baby crocodile swims less than a meter away. 10 years ago, he was the hatchling being threatened by every predator in the swamp. Now, the shoe is on the other foot. But the mother croc, larger than the juvenile male, springs for hatchling's defense. She's picked a bull's time and she's very... Female will be all over him like a cheap suit. Smaller than the mother croc who's taken over this pool, he has no choice but to get away as fast as he can and find another pool to call home. He has to settle for a very small one, a watering hole he has all to himself. But if it doesn't attract any big prey, he may not survive. It's been two weeks, and no large prey items have even come close to this watering hole. Each day, he's expending more than 1,200 calories. 
and he doesn't have enough energy to make it to yet another watering hole. The young croc doesn't figure out how to get something he can actually eat. He's going to get weaker and weaker. He's putting more energy than he has to in order to get his food. And eventually, he's going to get too tired to grab anything even substantial. With the situation desperate, suddenly, the sensors on his jaw pick up something. He can't see through the murky water. But picking up ripples on the surface, his sensors give him very specific information about where the ripples are coming from. He swims closer and peeks his eyes above the water. Two meters away is a 45 kilogram impala. The more than 60,000 calories could keep him alive for four months. But if he blows this opportunity, it could cost him his life. To take this Impala down, he'll need every one of his evolutionary advantages But excellent, just 20% of the air is lost. He inhaled 20 centimeters of the site. He slots alone into the multiple radius. His extraordinary stealth gets him into striking range. But if he's going to take down something 10 times larger than anything he's killed before, it's going to come down to the final launch. Will it be fast enough to surprise this Impala? With spring from his legs, power from his muscular tail, and some of the most bone-crushing jaws on the planet, our young croc has sunk his teeth into the flesh of a large mammal. Finally, this 10-year-old juvenile becomes a full-fledged bull. The 60,000 calories propel him on to his next hunt. And five seasons later, when the wildebeest come, he'll return to the Mara River and take his place next to the older males. By then, his perfectly engineered body will be big enough and strong enough and at a feast. When the lean time comes, conserve energy, he can rapidly slow his body down. After beating the odds, he's now proven why Nile crocodiles are so successful and why they rule the river.